Welcome to Homestead Blessings. For generations, our family has kept alive the delightful and creative art of cooking from scratch. With some planning and a little preparation, you too can make scrumptious meals for your family and friends to enjoy. So let's get started cooking. For the West ladies, there's no better way to start a day than with a good, healthy country breakfast. We're going to talk about now what we're going to have for breakfast. We are going to make fried apples and onions, which is a very old-fashioned dish that they used to use in the pioneer days. They used to make that all the time for breakfast. It's really, really yummy. We're going to make fried potatoes. Those are always just very good for breakfast. And we're going to make stacked pancakes, which are Mmm, really good, especially with fresh maple syrup and homemade butter. And Hannah is going to show us about making the pancakes. For stacked pancakes, the ingredients you're going to need to start with are wheat flour. You're going to want one cup of wheat flour. We like and to use also, fresh ground. <laughs> that's right. Also, you're going to want to put it in a sifter, directly into your sifter, because it calls for sifted flour. So we're doing one cup of wheat flour. And I like to use one cup of white flour. You can use all wheat if you want, or you can use all white flour if you want. That's entirely up to you. But I like to kind of make it half and half. I think it makes a better pancake, actually. <laughs> then you're going to want two teaspoons of baking powder, which you already have that measured out here. And you're just going to dump that in your sifter. And one teaspoon of soda, you're going to dump that in there. And a half a teaspoon of salt, which I have the salt right here. There we go. And you're going to just sift those dry ingredients together right into your bowl. It helps to mix it, mix it up really well too, which you're also going to mix it with a fork, but the sifter helps to mix. I really like using my sifter at home. It's one of my favorite baking tools, I think, is my sifter. Oh, I know. It's fun to use. Yeah. yeah, it is. All right, can someone hand me a fork, please? Thank you. So once you have your dry ingredients well mixed up, that, then it's time to add the wet ingredients. Now's a good time to add the sugar. All right, you're going to want to add two tablespoons of sugar, and that can be after you've already mixed up your dry ingredients. Just put it right in there in the bowl. Mom, could you hand me two eggs, please? Sure will. Your next ingredients are going mm. to be two fresh eggs. We, we like to um, raise chickens, so we have fresh eggs just about any time we need them, and that is very nice. So you're just going to go ahead and put your eggs right in the bowl. There we go. And we can well, save. And you want to beat those? You can just beat those right into the bowl. You know, you don't have to just beat them like that. You don't want to mix all your flour in yet. You just kind of want to beat them, just like in that in their own little space right there. And then you add your buttermilk. And I have one cup and three fourths of buttermilk here. You just pour that right into your egg mixture. Buttermilk makes the best pancakes. It, does. Yes. it makes them get really tall. Right. And a half a cup of oil. And you can use just any vegetable oil that you have. We like to use coconut oil, but um, you know whatever kind of oil you would like That's to right. use in this. And you mix that. You kind of mix that in itself too before you start mixing in the flour. And when you go to mix in the flour, you're basically just stirring it to moisten. You don't want to like beat this batter like you would cornbread. You just want to stir it until all your flour is wet, no longer dry, and sticking to the sides here. So that's when you know your batter's mixed up. And while Hannah's mixing up the batter, we have our iron skillets ready. We love to fry pancakes in iron skillets. So we're going to start slowly heating this up so that by the time she has the batter mixed up, it'll be ready and hot to fry. We like to use um, coconut oil to fry our pancakes in. So we're going to put this in our, our heating skillet. I just use like a tablespoon to a, a skillet this size. We might spread it around a little bit. And I can feel that getting hot. This is going to be great. You want this nice and hot before you put your pancakes in it. You'll notice that the batter here, the pancake batter, is kind of lumpy. Now the first time I made pancakes, I was like, why is my batter all lumpy? But actually, it's supposed to look that way. So if your batter's lumpy, you do not have to beat it till it's smooth. That's perfectly fine. So, do you think we're ready to put one in? Okay, I guess pancakes. I'm going to fry the pancakes. 
Okay, we like to get, am I going to make my pancakes or y'all's pancakes? How about the normal size? Okay. <laughs> normal size. We I have a family competition, I think. Jasmine likes to make huge pancakes. And I like the normal size pancakes, so. So I think we can fit two in this skillet. We're just gonna. Looks like it's a little hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna turn it down a little bit now because it's nice and hot, as you can see. Might need a little bit more oil. Okay. You can also add oil as you're frying them. If you think you don't have enough, you don't want your pancakes to stick, just add a little bit more. And what we're gonna watch for is we're gonna watch the edges um, carefully because you've got got a little bit of oil in here. You don't want to have any oil popping on you, but we're going to watch the edges. And also, as they start to fry, this is so neat. I remember when I first learned to make pancakes, um, I think Mom taught me this. She said, watch for the little bubbles. Mm -hmm. And that's when you know when it's ready to turn. So this one's starting to make bubbles already. Yeah. I'm just going to start at the edge. and Oh, yeah, it's ready. Flip it over. There we go. Now, when these pancakes are done, this is the trick to making the best stacked pancakes. What you're going to do, so when you put the first pancake on the plate, you're going to put lots of butter and maple syrup. We make our own maple syrup and it tastes so good. We love doing it too. It's so much fun in the wintertime making maple syrup. And um, you put on the butter and then you pour on the maple syrup and you just stack them as high as you want like that. And I think it makes the best pancakes. Mm -hmm. Can't you make this mix ahead if you'd like to? Multiply your recipe maybe six times of your dry ingredients. Mm -hmm. So like your flour and your soda and your salt. And then you would mix it up and have it ready. And then all you have to do later on is add your oil and your eggs and your buttermilk. And it makes it a little easier when you go to make breakfast in the morning. You're one step ahead. Yeah. You think it's ready to put on the plate? I think these are about done. So Hannah is ready with her butter. I've got my butter already softened and it's so yummy to use fresh homemade butter also. It just makes the pancakes so much better. And here's the maple syrup. Pour that on there. Beautiful. Whoa. Oh. Are you ready to put the next pancake on? Yep. And you kind of do this assembly. Yeah, it helps if you have brothers or sisters or your mom or dad who can help you out in the kitchen because it makes it so much smoother yeah. than if you're doing it on your own. Oh, Add some oil. more oil. I think we can fit one more pancake on this stack when they're done. Oh, that looks so good. Woo! Um, <laughs> this one's ready to, this one's ready to so. go. All right. Oh, I guess the reason why I've never liked making the big pancakes is they're trickier to flip. But she's got it down. She can just flip them, and I flip them, and the batter goes everywhere. <laughs> yeah, there's a little, you have, so to, like you have to practice small. flipping your pancakes. So we're just going to put one more on here, and That's I think. Right, and that'll be a stack. Yep. yep. And then we're going to start frying potatoes Why they keep frying pancakes. Okay, you want to put some, do you need to add more butter? I think I already buttered that one. Why don't you put that one on top? Put that one on there, and that is a stacked Pancake, that is so cool. And you can make the stack as high as you want. If you like to eat 10 pan pancakes at a time, Ooh. you can stack up 10. I think we're gonna go with three because I don't think I can handle 10 pancakes. Growing up, I always wanted mom, before I learned how to cook, I was like, mom, fried potatoes, fried potatoes. I love fried potatoes. But we never really understood the trick of frying potatoes because there is a trick to it you know to try not to get them stick or get done all the way but not get too done so I finally learned after a while we were up in Kentucky mm -hmm. visiting some friends some hill folk up there mm -hmm. and um, she was in there our friend was in there frying potatoes for breakfast and I came in I said how do you make them where they don't all turn brown or just stick real bad but they still get done and they're soft and she taught me how to do it and I'm going to show y'all now First thing we're going to do is get our skillet hot here and I'm going to go ahead and put some oil in the stick skillet. Like we said before we use coconut oil but you can use any oil you prefer. Um, a lot of the, the oil, yeah you want your the bottom of your skillet just really nice and coated. You, you don't want it like of course, it's not it's not deep fry, mm -hmm. but it's um, probably I'd say about a half inch of oil in the bottom of your skillet at the most, maybe a little less. Kind of eye it here. A fourth inch to a half inch of oil in the bottom. 
Um, a lot of the old timers and pioneer folks, they used lard because you always had a lot of lard on hand on a farm and that's also very good to fry in when you're frying potatoes. It just works great. It's good for the skillet too. Yes, it the helps keep really your skillet really nice. Okay. All right, we got our potatoes over here. You drain? Just bring them over here, yeah. What we did is we've already cut up our potatoes and we've got water over them, cold water, so they won't turn brown because after you cut up potatoes and you peel them and all that stuff, sometimes they just turn brown if we mm -hmm. even send them out. Also, another great tip mm -hmm. is if you know you want to have fried potatoes for breakfast, the night before, cut up, peel and cut up your potatoes and cover them with water and put it in, in a cool place like the refrigerator and they are all ready the next morning for you to drain them off and start frying. So that's what we need to do with these. Also the cold water and keeping them in the fridge helps keep them crisp and fresh. And we've just cut up our potatoes in small like um, chunks or cubes here. You don't want them real real big but you don't want them real real small either. So a medium size is good. Our grease is getting hot here. Okay. Mm. That's a neat sound, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I like that That's sound. That's a good sound. <laughs> what I'm going to do here is just do a nice, even layer. I don't want to fill them up too much because I am going to be stirring them around. You notice how they sizzled when we threw them in there, that's good because that's going to brown them a little bit like hash browns. And we're going to let them start cooking like that. Now once I do that, I just kind of leave them alone and let them set there. And watch your temperature. And this is also a good time to flavor your potatoes because they will absorb in that flavor. So if you want, if you want your potatoes just to be plain and put some salt and black pepper just like that or you just don't want to flavor them at all, that's okay. I like to put like a Creole seasoning in a, a little bit. It's just nice if it's a little spice to it. Should I like get spicy that out? I, yes. We might, do we'll do that. Pepper. Okay. And I'm going to do some black pepper here. Put a little bit mm. of this in here. That's smelling good already. Mm. A little bit of salt on there. Now, we can see if they need turning a little bit. What I'm doing here is I'm just kind of stirring these around so they all get coated in the oil. And they are, they are leaving a little bit on the bottom here. They are sticking a little bit. But don't worry if they do that, it's okay. I still have plenty of oil in there. Should you turn it down a little bit? Well, I don't know. I think it's okay. Yeah, because I guess potatoes take a little bit longer mm -hmm. to cook, so you do want this one a little bit higher than for frying yep. pancakes. So. Now you can watch it if you think that they're sticking too much, they might need to be turned down or you might need to add a little bit more oil. These look like they have plenty of oil. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to put a lid on them and that's one of the secrets about frying, I found about frying potatoes is that steam it's going to come up on this lid and it, the steam is actually going to cook them and on the bottom they're going to get fried and brown so they turn out really good and soft to eat. And I'm going to switch burners. I'm going to put them on the back burner here. Put my other skillet up so I can show you. While these are cooking out back here, I'm going to show you how to make fried apples and onions. Now, when I first heard about that, I was like, that just doesn't sound good. Like, apples are sweet and onions are hot and, you know, make your eyes water. But I tried it and it was so delicious. Nice. So, Mom's going to help us out with our apples here. What we want to do is we're going to um, core our apples with our little handy apple core. Oh, this is neat. Like this. Mm -hmm. Make sure you wash your apples ahead of time. And it'd be a good idea to have organic apples because we're going to leave the peeling on the apples. And it's fun to get a really pretty colored apple, like a green, like a really green uh, tart apple or a really pretty red and yellow apples are really nice to have. We're gonna let the, leave the peeling on because as we fry them, we want them to keep their uh, shape. We don't want them to turn into mush like applesauce. We're gonna put butter in the skillet for the apples and onions because that's gonna be really good. That's a handy tool, isn't it? Yes, it it's is. It's apple core. For your fried apples, you need to use a yellow onion. You don't, it doesn't need to be a sweet onion, a yellow, it doesn't need to be hot, but like a nice 
medium yellow onion. And a great tip before you go chopping up your onion and start crying all over the place is to run it under cold water for a while. Yes. That really helps. And Cecilia, you want me to chop these apples in half? Right. Chop them in half again. Yep, so they'll be quarters. Right. Chop them in half again. Yep. And that makes eight, eight pieces. Right. Yep. A little math here, a little kinda educational like, cooking. Huh? Kind of like cutting a pie. Yeah. Okay, I can do that. So I'm going right. to chop and chop. And I'm going to check on these potatoes while she's doing that. Yes, that's exactly what I want them to do there. So now we've got three things going here. Yep. Pancakes, potatoes, and apples. Fried apples. Just stick them in this bowl here till we throw them in the skillet. Okay. Now what you want to do is uh, you're just going to cut your onions into rings and then cut them in half. Oh, I can cut them in half for yep. you, okay? All right. I'm, I'm got, I've gotten on a roll here. <laughs> we're going to put, the first thing we're going to do for the fried apples and onions is we're going to put our onion rings here down here into the butter. Let me turn that down a little bit. Right, you can usually tell um, if your skillet is really hot, like now it's sizzling really fast. That means it's really hot. So that's why she turned it down. Those are some things to look for when you're frying. Yep. If it was slower, you might have needed to turn it up a little bit. Now, Cece, are you going to do those till they're clear or? Yes. What you want to do is cook your onions till they're nice and soft and kind of clear. Just like this in your hot butter or whatever oil you would like to use. Onions go with everything, don't they? Fried apples. They really right? do. They yeah, do, they really. You can wonderful. put onions in so onions much stuff. Go everything. I'm going to keep the lid off now and let them get nice and brown because they're not really browning right now. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, another thing, too, at this stage, um, you could take a fork and uh, stick it in your potato to see how tender it is. And that way you'll, you'll have a little bit of an idea of how much longer you need to cook them. Mm -hmm. That way, that's a good way to judge um, how much longer Matter you fact, need. I might need to borrow this flipper here. Okay, I think I we're, can. sure. These can, get, can go a little longer. They are almost done. These look so good. Mm, yep, it's all smells so good. Yeah. Pancakes. It's nice to have your food look good, but you know, we know it's going to taste it's more good, so. to make sure it tastes exactly. good. Exactly. Well, now y'all, I'm a visual. I <laughs> like it to look good. I do. I love the colors and the patterns. Right, that's and stacked pancakes. The golden breakfast is coming together. Yep, this right. is great. Now, our onions look like they're ready to add the apples to them, so I'm just going to place these apples in here like this. Just kind of throw them in there. Do you always cut them this thick, or is that just a preference? It's probably a preference. I mean, they probably cook faster if they were really thin. That's what I was thinking, yeah. And then if you want them to cook slow and just kind of absorb in all the flavor, then you can cut them bigger thicker that's a good idea I, I think that size is perfect i really do because you still have like a almost like a crunch firmness mm -hmm. but right. oh it's delicious and it still gets cooked right. in time yeah now this is optional but once you put your layer of apples over your onions you can um, put in about two tablespoons of brown sugar if you want to sprinkle that and you can even Put in a little bit of maybe a tiny bit of cinnamon or like an apple oh, pie yeah. spice. That oh, would be yummy. You good. know, maple syrup would work really maple well too of good. the apples. Do you want to try that today? Let's do maple syrup right. today. I, can, I love uh, maple syrup. <laughs> get some apple pie spice. You want to use that? Sure. Yeah, that'd okay. Be nice. Let's go with that. Delicious. That's another awesome thing about making your own meals from scratch. You can completely just add whatever you feel like. You know, if you don't have the brown sugar, you add the maple syrup. Um, if you don't have the cinnamon, you can use apple pie spice, and you can make create almost an entirely new meal than what you originally started with, or maybe something different if you're tired of the same old food, by just adding a different spice or a different sweetener. What I'm going to do now for our um, fried apples and onions is I'm going to put the lid over it just for a little while, get that steam to cook those um, apples really good. And we can even switch burners probably. I need to, I'm going to stir these uh, potatoes here. They're almost done, I think. Mom, would you like to test them with the fork, please, yeah. and see if they're soft enough? 
You want them soft, but you don't want them like mashed potatoes soft, but you don't want them really hard either. Kind of like they a, can go a little while, so you see. Almost like a boiled potato. Yeah. Let those cook. I wonder how the apples are doing. Well, we can you check them and see. <laughs> yep. wow. See all that steam? Ooh, I bet they could, I'll put it right back over. I really would. Well, I could I'm, tell. Let's stir them around here okay. a little bit and get those that's onions a good idea. From underneath. Oh, the smell. Oh, that smells so good. Mmm. That does remind me of fall. That's mm -hmm, a great. It does. Yeah, it does. We're going to finish frying these potatoes, and while our apples are cooking and the potatoes are finishing, Mom and I are going to show you how to make a healthy smoothie. Well, now we're ready to make our healthy green smoothie, and we have our ingredients here. We have frozen bananas. I'll let you chop them, Mom. Okay, and sure. one of the nice things about freezing bananas, this makes an excellent base for a smoothie. It just, oh, wow. it adds creaminess yeah. and it also is the sweetener. Which is so neat. We are not going to add any additional sweetener to this. It's just the fruit and the green stuff and the good milk. We have nice fresh milk here. Green smoothies, that does sound a little strange, but this <laughs> banana is so good and so tasty that you don't even taste the green. It's just your health, your nutrition, and your energy right in there. It just this happens is, to be a green color. Yeah, this is kale right from our yard. Um, we've grown this kale and it's kind of like uh, before frost. It hasn't frosted yet, but the kale is really nice and green and this is a very healthy stuff. Right, we're gonna just um, tear this up just a little bit, throw it in there. I like to get out the, um, the tough stem. So just pick the tough stem out because it doesn't blend very well. We want a smooth smoothie. So we're just gonna tear it up a little bit. I only have this little bit of kale, so I am gonna add some superfood. This can be just mm. powdered, um, superfoods like spirulina or um, spinach powder. If you don't have this, that's okay. And you know what, if you don't like green and you don't wanna make a green smoothie, just forget the kale and just make it with bananas and milk. It makes a wonderful smoothie. Just gonna add a tablespoon of that in there. Mm. Can you sell that for yes, me, Mom? Okay, and we like to use um, cow milk. This is raw cow milk. This is good nutrition. If you mm. can't get raw cow milk, just get some from the supermarket. Preferably organic. We're making a healthy smoothie here. So I just like put half um, milk and as you can see the bananas come up here and the kale comes up here. We're going to put the lid on. We're going to start on low so that our blender can chop up those bananas a little bit more. There we go. Okay, we're going to stop it. And would you hand me one of those um, wooden spoons? We love our wooden spoons. It's a wooden fork, is that okay? A wooden fork, <laughs> this will work. Okay. okay, we're just gonna hand stir it up just a tad to get that green down in the bottom of it, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is looking good already. I can't wait to taste it. Okay, we're gonna go on low one more time. It's almost all the way blended up. We're gonna switch to high. Okay, what we want to do, you can see, you can still see a little particle of the kale. I like to blend that until it's totally smooth. So we're going to blend it one more time and then it's ready to eat. Mm. Might stir it a little bit. This is, I think this is ready. Mm. I like it. I have. I have a green glass because for those who are still getting used to healthy foods and, and green foods, I go ahead and put it in the dark glass and that way it doesn't look so strange. But this is delicious. It really, really is. So I'm just going to pour this up. I might have a little sip. Then we'll see how the other breakfast is getting along. Mm, that is so good. I don't taste any green, but I know it's got it in there and it's going to be healthy for me. It's going to give me energy to finish cooking this breakfast. So let's see how it's going over there. Mm. Ooh. Very good, yes, they're done. And I think our pancakes are coming along real well too. Let's check on the apples here. Wow, that's what we want them to look like. How's the pancakes? 
Um, well, I've got several plates already done. Hand so. me a plate. All right. You ready to serve up here. a breakfast plate? And the apple is delicious. You want me to help you? Nice. Some Hold it for you. I got the plate. Okay. Mm hmm There you go. That is a, is a good breakfast. <laughs> that looks delicious. We have our fried apples and onions, our fried potatoes, stacked pancakes, and a healthy green smoothie. This is a great country breakfast. All right, now that we've made a great breakfast, it's time to make some lunch. Today, we're going to have homemade pizza and tomato soup. All right. First, for the tomato soup, since we're going to make that first, we want that to be simmering on our back burner and cooking nice while we're going to decorate the pizza later. So, to get started on the tomato soup, the first thing I'm going to do is um, gently or lightly brown some onions in a skillet. So, Hannah, if you want to put some oil in the skillet sure. and turn it on about medium, it doesn't need to be real hot at all. And I'm going to chop up some onions here real quick. Onions are a great way to start just about any kind of savory any kind meal, of, huh? Yes, definitely. We've even had friends who said they didn't like onions at all. Oh, I know. Eat our food when we put onions in them, and I think like, it's because we saute them first. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. It's not like they're raw and real hot they're and spicy. They're not the fresh yeah. onion flavor. It, it's a whole other flavor, but it's really good. Let's see, I don't know if our skillet's real hot yet, but nope, not yet. And I'm going right. to start chopping up some garlic here. Ooh, those onions are strong. They are, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. And I even ran my onion under the water for a good amount of time. Hey, Hannah, can you hand me a little I'm handy? Get the oh, you're doing the carrots. carrots. Yeah. All right. The next thing I'm going to put in that onion skillet is this garlic. If you're almost done with that, you can yeah. take over the chocolate okay, and the garlic. Okay, I can do that. And I'm going to take this and put it in here. It's starting to smell so yep, good. I bet this sure is going to be a really good soup. It's it's a great idea to saute, I believe, to saute your vegetables, some of your vegetables that you're going to put in your soup first because it just, it makes this great flavor that you don't get if you just throw raw vegetables in some cold, you know, stock. I think it helps to hold the flavor in the vegetables when you saute the onions first then add mm -hmm. the vegetables. Is that right? Yes, it is. Now are we going to saute these carrots? We are, but first, before we do that, I am going to go ahead in my skillet here. I'm going to take out um, my bouillon cube here. I have a vegetable bou bouillon. And I'm going to put it, go ahead and put it in now. Usually uh, you probably add it in your broth, but I started doing this and it just, it makes a huge difference. It dissolves, your... does it dissolve well that way? Yeah, I'll show you what I do. Okay. I actually just start smashing it into this oil here. Oh, I see. With Mix it with the onions and the garlic. Which we might need a tad more oil in here. All right. Oh, that's good. That's, that's good. good. That's good. <laughs> now we can um, quarter up these tomatoes here. All right. These tomatoes, these are like, Ro they're called Roma tomatoes. And um, they're great to use if um, there are real more of a meaty tomato than they are actually juicy. And they're great to use um, for tomato soups or if you're gonna um, make like tomato sauce, uh, it's better to use these tomatoes so you don't have so much juice, you know, that mm -hmm. you have to That's boil right. out or cook out. So as opposed to like your sandwich tomatoes, which right. are big and round and just sliced, these are more of, like she said, a meaty, yeah. a thick tomato. And uh, we're just cutting them up like this. Actually, they don't have to be cut out real small. And we're going to put them, you can just cut up a few more. We're going to put them right here. 